So Jim, why is it that this interview is necessary? Unfortunately, and because of BBC Scotland's apparent inability to treat Rangers in a fair and balanced manner, it's necessary to set the record straight following a, a, a broadcast which was put out on Tuesday night, I think, on Reporting Scotland. The BBC in Scotland had asked to interview Rangers Managing Director Stuart Robertson after he'd claimed they were biased against the club, the BBC, and he did that on Rangers TV. So they wanted to do a news piece. They thought it was valid. And they're probably quite correct in that. They wanted to do what they said would be a balanced and fair news piece that would reflect both sides. Um, so actually, it, it didn't, you know, even though um, they, they will insist, and I'm quite sure they have because there's been email exchanges since the, the, the interview, um, they'll insist it was balanced and fair, but it was anything. But I did the interview because Stuart couldn't, uh, there'd been hypocrisy. Um, not that the BBC are recognising their own hypocrisy and that they refuse to attend Ibrox, they refuse to interview Rangers players and management, um, but yet they wanted to interview the managing director when it suited their agenda. So Stuart couldn't possibly do it, but because I'm not a member of Rangers staff, I could do it because I'm also a, a spokesman for the club in, in various issues. So I did it, but um, I pointed out that I would list examples of where the BBC had been less than fair and even accurate in the reporting of Rangers affairs uh, and even some matches. Um, they said they would include that. None of that saw the light of day. So that's why I, I felt it was necessary to do this interview, just to let Rangers fans know what's going on. And this is yet another example of what I would call selective editing to suit BBC Scotland's agenda. So remind us why BBC Scotland refuses to attend Ibrox. Well, they insist that they're standing in solidarity with uh, one of their journalists whose media accreditation was withheld after a series of, let's say, reports which were neither accurate nor balanced. Not all of them, some of them, and some of them being quite crucial. BBC Scotland say that, um, rather grandly, I think, that they can't allow any outside bodies to dictate editorial policy. So that's why they're not coming, because they say that if we don't allow that particular journalist in, we're dictating to them who they can and can't say. No, we're not. They have, they're awash with journalists and reporters, awash with them. Now, the, the fact is, if you... Rangers have, has no desire to dictate anyone's uh, editorial policy. They're not looking for favour from anyone. They're just looking for balance and accuracy and fairness. So let me put it this way. If, if someone's standing outside your, your house... I'm sure the BBC people would, would understand this as well. And that person's throwing mud and stones at your windows. You're not going to open your door and invite that person in, are you? That's effectively what the BBC want Rangers to do. It's this, this um, mock indignation, is what I would call it. So they say they're standing in solidarity, therefore they won't come and interview anyone at Rangers or, or cover the matches. They, they, they would come and cover the matches, they've decided now. Um, but not do any interviews. So they're confirming that they will treat Rangers differently. So Rangers cannot possibly agree to a policy which discriminates against them. And the BBC, I think it's quite absurd that they should even suggest that they do this. So when you spoke with them earlier this week, were you able to provide examples? Of course. Um, let me run through some of them right now. And we could go back a number of years, um, because this, this started some time ago, um, and because BBC Scotland's intransigence and stubborn um, refusal to acknowledge that there may be something wrong in the way they approach uh, reporting Rangers affairs. This has been going on for a number of years, but, but let's, let's not refer to or dwell on the montage of Valley McCoy when he was the manager falling from a window. Um, so better not to talk about that, leave that one, let's bring it up a wee bit nearer, t nearer today, for instance, Alfredo Morelos in the Old Firm game, the end of December, um, they poured over that with uh, his behaviour in that game within a forensic scrutiny, let's say. There were other incidents in that game and other matches around the same time which were ignored completely um, and it seemed that Alfredo Morelos was being singled out and targeted. Now, you, if you look at all the evidence and the number of times the BBC has replayed that particular footage, even this week, and that match was the 29th of December, they are still rerunning that footage. They, they have an unhealthy obsession with Alfredo Morelos and they're sitting as judge and jury and they're condemning him. They, 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 they don't do any other players to the same degree or the same intensity 
Unless, of course, it's Alan McGregor. They did that in the recent Aberdeen game. Again, that was highlighted on various BBC platforms, BBC Scotland platforms. And eventually, of course, McGregor cited and he, he gets suspended. Now, whether or not he should have been suspended for the, for the incident or the challenge in the first place is not what I'm getting at here. It's the way the BBC highlight particular incidents involving Rangers players. Now, to give you another example of uh, the, is still on the McGregor incident, they had a, a, a radio programme just after it. Um, and they spent about 20, 25 minutes discussing this. It was a debate about the challenge and whether it was violent or whether it was accidental or whether he knew anything about it. That debate was led largely by Lewis Ferguson's dad, Derek. Now, where's the objectivity in that? There is none. It's not objective. That's objectionable. But they did it anyway. Now, there are other examples, uh, recent examples as well, where you've had them um, using an image of a decapitated Ryan Jack to illustrate a, an Aberdeen ticketing story. You had them recently um, showing an image of the tax man approaching the blue gates at Ibrox, the iconic gates, and a story that had nothing to do with that past issue. Absolutely nothing. That was taken down. The picture of Ryan Jack... Um, was taken down very quickly. We received an apology for that. Um, you have another one more recently where, at the turn of the year, they, some reporter, and I use the word loosely here, um, did an A to Z on the, the, the season so far. Uh, lots of media outlets do that. They're tedious and they're boring, but they do them. Um, this one was done in a sort of clunking fashion. And under R, they have racism but they use an example of racism at Ibrox, which did not happen. And then they have to take it out. No apology for that one, but then that doesn't matter now because apologies from them are worthless because these things happen time after time after time. Now, there is a, there is a, there is a, a catalogue of examples which will be addressed at whatever level with the BBC. We have been negotiating with them for two, three years now. It's no further forward because there's an intransigence there. They will not accept that any of their journalists, any of their workers, any of their members of staff could be anything less than absolutely honest and full of integrity in everything they do. Now, that's just absurd. Are there other examples that perhaps relate to matters off the pitch as well? Well, well there are. And, and if you look at uh, some of the, the Twitter feeds from people who work for the BBC or who contribute to the BBC, even in the business side of it, um, because there's been lots of issues with the takeover panel and Dave King, um, you, you can go there and you'll find examples of where people under the BBC handles are tweeting some derogatory comments about Dave King and, and this business. Um, but as I said, they, they're contained in a catalogue of these, uh, these examples which will be addressed. Uh, through the proper channels, and that will take some time, but Rangers won't let this slide. There was another one, a perfect example, in fact, where another apology was given where uh, Rangers received an £8 million offer for Morelos last year. Now, immediately, some reports in the BBC wrote that this was rubbish and rubbish the, the, this story. Now, the fact is it was true, and it was shown to be true. That reporter was shown the evidence, um, and so an apology was given. But the... This happens constantly. It's almost on a weekly basis now that we are seeing examples of where the BBC are being less than fair, less than balanced and less than accurate. And it really has to stop. And they have to acknowledge that this is happening before we can move forward. So in terms of moving forward, what can Rangers do about this? Rangers has over the last few years been trying to resolve this issue with the BBC and uh, that will continue. These talks, negotiations will continue, but they might last some time because it's three, four years now and we're no further forward. But Rangers fans need to bear in mind that, and the BBC do need to do this as well, that they pay licence fees, the same as everybody else, but they are being given a lesser service because they can't see their team on the BBC platforms. They can't hear from their manager or players on BBC platforms. That's wrong. This is the biggest club in the country. These fans deserve better from a national broadcaster and a publicly funded broadcaster as well. They deserve so much better. Rangers fans can turn this around as well. It may speed up the process because, as I say, it's been going on for four years now. 
they can help. They can help enormously. They can demand that the BBC start to respect them and their club. And all we are asking for is fairness, balance and accuracy. And Rangers fans can play a big part in achieving this and turning the BBC around.